Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Kozirakis, and today I will give you a short update on the DBOS project that is developing a database oriented operating system. This project is a collaboration between academics at MIT, Stanford, and Nikon Labs, as well as our industrial partners at VMware and Google. Our goal is to develop the next generation of operating systems for large scale data centers and cloud platforms. We believe this is necessary because the basic ideas that underpin modern operating systems were introduced decades ago when both systems and applications were dramatically different in terms of scale, concurrency, and heterogeneity. The biggest obstacle we've encountered in our past operating systems research has been that of state management. The system state in large scale data centers is several orders of magnitude larger than the state in the original release of Linux back in the 70s. More important, the state is spread across numerous layers of kernels, modules, local and distributed file systems, cluster managers, logging systems, and security frameworks. And each one of these layers uses a different and typically ad hoc approach to organize the state, manage concurrency, and provide availability. This makes it very difficult and error prone to introduce any new ideas into modern operating systems and cluster managers. To address this data management problem, we are developing an idea that some members of this community have been advocating for for decades. Let's build an operating system where all the system and user state are in a modern distributed database. With all the state in a database, key features such as concurrency control and high availability are immediately available for all system state. Similarly, key performance optimizations and support for new compute hardware or new memory devices are also implemented once the database and available for all users. In DBOS, both local and distributed operating system services are developed as sequences or graphs of database transactions that operate on system state. They're written mostly in SQL as user-defined functions or stored procedures. Here's the system stack we envision for DBOS. At the bottom level, there's a simple microkernel or unikernel that provides just enough functionality to launch a distributed database. The second level uh, is a state-of-the-art distributed database that stores all the system and user state. In the third level, we have operating system services, such as interprocess communication, task scheduling, file systems, and security services. They're written as collections of transactions on top of the distributed database. And finally, we have applications that are protected from the rest of the stack, as in today's systems. These applications may be single node or distributed. They may be written in a traditional programming language or using a modern serverless framework. In the first phase of our project, we focus on the feasibility and efficiency of implementing key operating system services such as IPC, file systems, and task scheduling on top of a high-speed distributed database. So far, we mostly use the VoltDB. Let's look at an example of a simplified version of a scheduling system for a single node or a whole data center. We need two tables, one to track in-progress tasks and one to track available compute workers, cores, or whole machines. A five-foot task scheduler starts with a query to the worker table to find a worker with available compute capacity. If it exists, we update the worker state and insert the task in the in-progress task table. It is quite simple to write, even for people without extensive systems hacking experience or extensive knowledge of the underlying database implementation. It's also quite simple to extend and improve such scheduler. For example, assume we want to implement a least loaded version of the scheduler in order to even out the load across our system. All we have to do is to add one line in the worker selection query. The rest of the scheduler remains exactly the same. We have an upcoming VLDB paper that provides more examples about how to implement key operating system services in DBOS. More important, it addresses the key question about our project, whether DBOS can be performant. A state-of-the-art in-memory database allows us to build operating system services at the microsecond scale that are competitive with the latency and the throughput of conventional operating systems. In the second phase of our project, we built an end-to-end -end serverless framework for DBOS. This framework can support data sending applications such as e-commerce sites and social networks. The most exciting feature of our DBOS serverless system is that it provides unified support for function execution, data management, and operation logging. User functions execute as asset transactions with exactly one semantics. The system automatically captures data provenance at function granularity, enabling monitoring, debugging, and auditing queries for large-scale application deployments. And interestingly, our DPOS serverless system is also 10x to 100x faster than existing and recently proposed serverless systems. We'll show you a demo of our serverless system at the end of this talk. 
Let's now talk about our major lessons from working on DBOS for a little over a year now. As we already mentioned, state-of-the-art databases are fast enough to implement operating system services, and SQL allows quick development and changes to OS services. We also learned that writing all level three services as store procedures works really well. This is what gives our serverless framework its performance advantage. Stored procedures reduce the amount of communication needed across the system for small state updates. Finally, we also learned that our database needs to be a policy tool. Many operating system services require fast modifications to small amounts of state, making a fast OLTP database like VoltDB ideal for the task. However, provenance, debugging, and monitoring services require a database optimized for analyzing large amount of logging data. Hence, our serverless system uses both VoltDB and Vertica to satisfy both requirements. There's also a number of features we'd like to see in databases to make the development of systems like DBOS simpler. Tuning a multi-core distributed DBMS is quite difficult. So we're quite excited about all efforts to auto-tune these systems. It's also important to optimize their operation for large-scale deployments where state may not fit in main memory or the number of concurrent clients can be quite high. Since we're implementing multi-tenant operating environments, it'd be great to strengthen multi-tenant support across all aspects of database systems. We'd also use better support for policy stores. For example, we'd use configurable and fine-grained support for what system events are captured in the OLAP database. Our CIDR paper goes into more details on these requirements, so we encourage you to take a look. Now let's see the demo of the DBOS serverless system. All right. So now we want to show you what our current prototype of DBOS looks like. This prototype, which we earlier called phase two, is a function as a service platform built using DBOS principles. We're going to demo it on a simple e-commerce web service that adds items to a customer's online shopping cart. So here's what the code for this application looks like. Because our prototype is a function as a service platform, you simply write a function and submit it to DBOS. Because we tightly integrate function execution with data management following DBOS principles, this function can directly call SQL to access or modify data stored in the DBOS database tables. The really cool thing about running applications in DBOS is that DBOS automatically captures incredibly valuable data province information needed for debugging, monitoring, and auditing use cases. For example, DBOS automatically records execution history, how many times each operation executes and with what inputs. It also automatically records data access history, what records each execution read from and wrote to the database. This information is very hard to capture in conventional systems, but is recorded automatically in DBOS. So now let's show you some example queries that DBOS can run over this captured data. A simple query might be how many times each operation executed in a time range, which is useful for monitoring system status. Because all the captured data province information are just entries in database tables, we can write this as a simple SQL query. A more interesting and complex data provenance query might be, what was the state of a table when this particular operation accessed it? This is a debugging query, useful to figure out why an operation failed. It is very hard to run in a conventional system, requiring extensive manual logging, but it's an easy SQL query over automatically captured data in DBOS. Then we actually run our example web application. Now it's finished. Let's check the runtime results. OK, you can see the latency was low, only a few hundred microseconds. Then we run our two provenance queries written in SQL we just talked about. For the first execution history query, you'll see return within tens of milliseconds, even when we run queries on data generated from millions of operations. Now let's move on to our second debugging query to check the state of the table. OK, let's see. It returned within 5 milliseconds. So they are fast enough to be queried interactively for monitoring and debugging. Here's what's next for our project. We want to improve key DBOS features, such as support for heterogeneous hardware and security. 
but also starting to work with industrial partners on demand use cases that will showcase benefits of DBOS and expose any limitations that will need to work next. And of course, we're looking forward to your feedback on the current work on this project or any future directions. Thank you for your attention.